All right, I wanted to start with lifetime after lifetime, but I realized I was getting ahead of myself. We need to talk about Siloam first. Siloam, Siloam. You say potato, I say spud, whatever. We'll start with the ninth of John. Now as Jesus was passing by, he saw a man, blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned, but this happened so that the works of God would be displayed in him. Now let's read that again and let's pay attention. Neither this man nor his parents sinned, but this happened so that the works of God would be displayed in him. Understand this. Jesus just shit all over karma. Understand this. There is no fucking karma. You know, the age of Gemini, the prince of the power of the air, the lying messenger. Now, you can call him Thoth in Egypt. You can call him Cadmus in Phoenicia. You can call him Hermes in Greek or Mercury in Rome. You can call him Isdras in the Arabic. You can call him Enoch in the Judeo-Christian. But no matter what you call him, he's a lying, deceiving son of a bitch. He's Loki in the Norse. For every truth he gives you, he gives you at least one lie. Anybody who trusts him is a fool. Why do you think you have to do biblical hermeneutics? Nebo, protect the boundary. The alchemists cry, oh, thank God for Mercury. Mercury is the problem here. There is no karma. There is only experience. Now, there are consequences, yes. And they occur within the lifetime, but you don't go to a crappier lifetime because I owe, I owe. It's off to a shitty life I go. Goddard said this. Other people have said this. And still, everybody is talking about karma. What goes around comes around. Well, yeah, mathematically, it's gonna, eventually. You're going to reap what you sow. But it's got nothing to do with Mercury. It's got nothing to do with karma, with Buddha. You know, Buddha said that all of human suffering begins with, I want. That phrase, I want. And while that may be true, it also completely misses the effing point. The whole point of this place is to want. It is to desire. It is to experience all of these things, the good and the bad, so that you can reach Corinth. Corinth means satiation. And when you finally hold up your hands and say, I'm done, I've had enough. I'm disgusted by all of it. I don't want anything else here. I am satiated. You're never going to do that unless you first want things. There is no karma. This is a pet peeve of mine, and it's a big one. Kelly Coffey said, nah, there's no karma. Neville Goddard said, nah, there's no karma. Most importantly, Jesus Christ said, ah, there's no karma. Let's work on that, can we? Anyway, continuing. While it is daytime, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. Now, if you want to know more about night and day, 
check out Lavette's channel. She has covered night and day, astrologically speaking, what those periods of time are, what those ages are. Continuing, while I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When Jesus had said this, he spat on the ground, made some mud, applied it to the man's eyes. Then he told him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent, as in I sent you a text. So the man went and he washed, and he came back seeing. At this, his neighbors and those who had formerly seen him begging began to ask, isn't this the man who used to sit and beg? Some claimed it was, some claimed it wasn't. Now, we're given a different version of it in Mark. In this one, he's a blind man at Bethsaida. Bethsaida means the house of the fish. This house, right here. Beth Seda. Some people brought a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him. So he took the man, blind man, by the hand, and he led him out of the village, and then he spit on the man's eyes and placed his hands on him. Can you see anything? he asked. The man looked up and said, I can see the people, but they, they look like trees walking around. Now, Goddard had this vision in about 1937 or 38. He said that in his vision he was walking through a massive sunflower field and it stretched from horizon to horizon in every direction. And these big beautiful sunflowers had big beautiful sunflower heads. And when he looked at the heads, each head had an individual human face, man and woman. Men and women, I should say. And he said that they were beautiful. He said they would look at one another. These, these, these sunflowers would rotate and look at one another and smile. Or they'd turn another direction and they would frown. Or they'd turn yet another direction and make an angry face. And he said it was a beautiful, beautiful dance. He said it was magnificent to see this dance. But that he realized that he had been part of this dance. But he wasn't anymore. Now, Goddard had been a dancer in his youth. He danced at the Hippodrome before they tore it down. He danced on Broadway. He toured Europe. He knew the theater and he knew dance. And he said this was a dance. It was a choreographed dance. He said, I couldn't be part of this dance anymore. I had choice, he said. I had real choice. I had volition. I could jump up and down, turn left, turn right, run back and forth. You could do handsprings if you wanted to, I guess. But he had real choice, he said. But they did not because they were in a dance. He said they were deeply rooted, get this, they were deeply rooted in the earth. And he was not. Not anymore. Now, I haven't had that vision. I don't need to have that vision. That is my reality. I look around and I see the scripts running. I see all the changes. I grew up on a planet Earth, on the Sagittarius arm of the Milky Way galaxy that had 9.5 billion people on it. I now exist here on this planet Earth, 26,000 light years from the center of the galaxy. 26,000 light years. 26,000 years is exactly the number of years it takes to go around the zodiac once. Interesting coinky dink, don't you think? 
Anyway, the planet now has 7.5 billion people on it. We lost 2 billion people, and outside of a few Mandela videos and a couple of Reddit threads, nobody noticed a damn thing. Nobody noticed. Mexico used, City used to have over 30 million people in it. It was the biggest city on Earth. I remember reading that. Not anymore. Well, it's still the biggest city on Earth, but not 30 million people. Here's the thing. There were never 9.5 billion people on Earth, and we were never on the Sagittarius arm. It was never Berenstein, which means to carry a stone. It's always been Berenstein, which means to carry a stain. There is no Proto-Indo-European root for the word stain. It came out of the garment dyeing industry in about 11, 1200 AD, and it meant a discoloration or a splotch. So I went from carrying a stone to carrying a stain. Hmm. Makes one think. Anyway. I haven't had this vision. This is my reality. See, because not only the planet Earth moved halfway across the galaxy, but so did the constellations that are light years away from us, some of them. And Orion <laughs> is much, much larger than it used to be. It's right in your face when I come out the south door. I grew up on a farm. It was a cattle farm. It was actually a cattle ranch, but when you say cattle ranch, people get this idea, Montana and Wyoming and Big Sky and Lots of contiguous ground, and it wasn't like that. We had lots of little bits of ground here and there, and we were always moving cattle. Always moving them around. What farming we did was in support of the cattle. I don't know a lot, but I know cattle. And around the clock, Around the year, I was outside, sun up to sundown. And oftentimes, way after sundown. Middle of the night. February, March, April. Bringing in wet calves, hanging over the back of the neck of a horse. I've looked up and looked at the Milky Way galaxy thousands of times before I was 18 years old. In every month of the year. And it stretched from northeast, actually north-northeast, to the southeast at a slight decline. Not anymore. Go look on a Google image search <clears throat> and the thing ticks across the sky like a our hand on a clock. I'm going to do a video at some point on what this place really is and how it operates. This electromagnetic reality of ours. But I see it for what it is. Now Goddard was a cardinal crosser. The hundredfold seed. I have a lot of respect for the hundredfold seed. I'm only a thirtyfolder. I'm kind of a piss poor excuse. Kind of a infected pimple on the ass end of a mystic's mule. But I've seen a few things and I understand a few things. At least I think I do know. And I don't want to be doing this. Believe you me, I don't. But I'm supposed to be doing this. <sighs> he 
spit on the man's eyes and placed his hands on him. Can you see anything? And the man looked up and said, I can see the people, but they look like sunflowers walking around. Once again, Jesus placed his hands on the man's eyes, and when he opened them, his sight was restored, and he could see everything clearly. Jesus sent him home. He sent him home. And he said, do not go back into the village. Do not work for food that perishes. Work for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you for. On him, God the Father has placed his seal of approval. Then he inquired, they inquired, what must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus replied, the work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. Siloam, which means sent. So you see the scripts. And you're not a hundredfold seed. Hell, you're not even a sixtyfold seed. You're a piss poor thirtyfold seed. What are you supposed to do about it? What are you supposed to do? You made the mistake of telling the Father, I want the truth. I don't care how good or bad or ugly it is. I need to know. I have to know. Please give me the truth. You be damn careful what you ask for. You just might get it. But see, we're told that just seeing the truth isn't enough. At that time, some of the present, some of those present told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mixed with their sacrifices. To this he replied, Do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered this fate? No, I tell you. But unless you repent, you too will all perish. Of those eighteen, one plus eight is nine. Nine is the number of consciousness. It's the number of seeing the scripts. It's the number of not getting the updates. Think about that. Of those number nine consciousnesses, who were killed when the Tower of Scent collapsed on them? Do you think that they were more sinful than all the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you. But unless you repent, unless you have a severe change of mind, you too will all perish. The Tower of Siloam. Down she goes in blue. Down he goes in red. Goodbye, crown. This is Barak. This is the lightning.
there really should be some bees around here. Maybe that's what these are supposed to be. B E E S Apis Honey Bees Deborah And then right after that, here we go. A man had a fig tree that was planted in his vineyard. He went to look for fruit on it, but did not find any. So he said to the keeper, Look, for the past three years I have come to search for fruit on this fig tree and haven't found any. Haven't found any. Therefore cut it down. Why should it use up the soil? Sir, the man replied, Leave it alone again this year until I dig around it and fertilize it. Done it. <laughs> if it bears fruit next year, fine. But if not, you can cut it down. It's next year for Peter. That's the part I've been cast in, in this play, in this program. You know, and I don't want to be doing this. I really don't. <clears throat> you have no idea how much I don't. But I'm supposed to. I'm supposed to. I was sent to. I see a lot of things in this book. A lot of things nobody else is talking about. Not the way I'm going to talk about them. A lot of people won't like it. By the time I'm done, just about everybody's going to be offended about something. Just about everybody, I think. And I'm not that guy. I like to get along with people. I never raise hell. I never rock the boat. I try to be good to people. I try to be kind. I'm the guy that pulls off the road and helps the stranded motorist. I'm the guy that goes around the block in heavy traffic to give the hobo a 20 with his cardboard side. I'm the guy that opens the doors. I'm the, I'm the nice guy. But I'm also the guy that when it came time to do the killing on the farm, a lot of people will cut the meat. Not a lot of people will swing the sledge or drop the hammer. It takes an asshole. And I'm just that perfect combination, I guess. Real sweetheart of an asshole. So, if you don't like what I say or how I say it, you are cordially invited to the door. Goodbye, and have a pleasant and wonderful and rewarding life. God bless you. You don't like what I have to say, don't get in my face or I will snap you like a twig. Understand this. Until the end, Daniel said, there will be war. And when I said Peter was the best of the worst, I'm not bullshitting you. The worst. So, until next time, be good to one another and be good to yourself. Forgive everyone for everything. This is a play. This is a program. This is a test. Remember Captain America? Is this a test? Yes. Don't fail to meet the test. 
how you go about meeting it. That's your business. I'll meet mine my way and it'll be good enough or it won't. But I won't be dictated to about how I do it. Not by anybody. So, I'm not telling you what to think or how to think about things. The world's full of shitty shepherds claiming to be good ones. I'm a shitty shepherd trying to be a good one. That's all I can claim. So, be loving and be kind. Be decent. Be a sweetheart. Don't be an asshole. We'll talk again soon. God willing.